aggressive getting to pit road. You can see they tried to go to the outside of Daniel Suarez. Oh, Suarez had to go up to Miss Keslowski and made heavy contact with the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Didn't look like Blaney was part of that group that was going to pit because that inside lane was fill up. Yeah, there was no way Blaney was going to be able to make it to pit road there. Oh. But what are the... So, I just wonder, was Blaney going to try to maybe sneak to the outside or, or in that gap between the 17 and the 2? I don't see how that was going to be possible. He had to have known that Suarez has already made his pit stop. But he also knew he had Ryan Newman on his outside. Couldn't, couldn't get any further to the right. Newman was there. I gotta say, this strategy was looking as if it was gonna work out incredible for the Fords because they had made up so much time being in a large group in the Jimmy Johnson group. They are faster uh, than the lead pack by, whoa, oh, in the wall the goes J.J. Ailey. Oh, man, that's a bummer. That's not the way you want your duel to end and your chance to make it into the Daytona 500. And the former USAC champion out there in the high lane and got turned into the wall. Here's the replay. Uh, looks like the 54 of Yaley just gets clipped in the right rear corner from the 32 of LaJoy. Remember, the 32 and the 66 were working together to try to draft to get ahead of these guys. Not sure how much contact there was there, or did we? Well, we'll see here. There it is. I just don't know if the yep. spotter or Yaley knew what a run that Corey LaJoy had coming in that uh, in that outside lane. So, yeah, you saw William Byron jump up there. I don't know if Yaley really reacted to that as much as just that outside lane had a big run coming. And just as in race one, the first caution of the event takes out one of the hopefuls.